Okay, folks, it's just about the top of the hour, so thank you for joining us for the first part of the uh, Do Journalism with Impact. Uh, we have two parts today. We've got the big picture for editors, which will be 15 minutes. Then we have 15 minutes uh, for reporters, which is just story ideas and topics that hopefully you can use. I'm just going to lead the opening of the session real quickly. Jean will be on the call. She's my boss. She's the Senior Director of Content. And, of course, for those of you who have um, met me, it does not seem to be playing through the computer. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Um, and I am the newsroom development guy. Um, but first, before we get rolling, and we're going to keep this fairly quick, I appreciate that Bill Church, our senior VP of News, has stopped in to talk a little about something that obviously is very near and dear to his heart, since he's the, the person who founded it, uh, it for us throughout the company, Do Journalism with Impact, so Bill Church. Hey, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Gene. Thank you to all the editors on the call. I can't tell you enough uh, how important this is. And as you're looking at the second half of this year and going into 2019, if there is one area that you may be struggling in that you should focus on as your number one priority, and that's planning. I can tell you it was a strategic part of our desire to put it in Inner Circle this year. My hope is that everyone passes by the end of the year, but I can also tell you that planning will continue to be an inner circle criteria going into 2019. It is the fundamentals of everything you do, and the excuse that you don't have time is just that, an excuse. So please take advantage of this opportunity to reach out to us and to also figure out how you can do this, because we have newsrooms with one or two folks who know how to plan well, so anyone can do it. All right, perfect, and on. Thank you very much, Bill. And on with that, let's turn it over to Jean. Jean? Thanks. Okay, so our agenda, and this is for the first 15 minutes, if you have signed up for the entire 30 minutes, some of you may be just biding your time and waiting until Tim runs through an amazing array of great story ideas in the last 15 minutes of this half hour. But as, as Bill said, doing journalism with impact, you, you really just can't effectively do that unless your, your planning. So we're going to talk a lot about planning here. We're going to back it up a little bit. So if you're new to us and you don't know what we mean by do journalism with, with impact and you think, ah, it's, it's big stories. We're just going to do some big stories. It's a little bit more technical than that. Uh, and so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about why it's important to plan. We'll give you some great examples of planning documents that we saw during Inner Circle and some great results that, that, that come from that planning. Uh, and that's from big big papers, small papers, and everything in between. So uh, we have, as Bill said, it, there's no excuse not to plan. And then five quick tips to make sure that you're planning well, and then some brainstorming tips from the master brainstormer, and that's Tim Schmidt. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so the key to doing journalism with impact, as I said, is planning. And I just love this little quote, which is a goal without a plan is just a wish. And we need to do way better than that for our readers, right? We really need to give them uh, some wonderful, uh, great journalism with impact. So what exactly is do journalism with impact? This may be a review for some people, but it may be new for others. Um, do journalism with impact really has to do with readers. It puts readers first, and it says, these are stories that have high interest with your readers. So they are not just some navel-gazing exercise in doing some big data project that nobody really knows why it's important. This has to be super, super high interest for your readers, big topics that are so important. It also has to be high engagement. So these are the stories that you see people talking about in town. You, or you hear them talking. You see them on social media. These are the things that really drive conversation and engagement. And then also you're going to want to hit those topics with high frequency. So this isn't just a one-and-done big project where you walk away. You just do something big and walk away. This is you're going to continue. These are the biggest topics in your town, the topics that matter most to your readers. It may be just one topic. It may be two. So really narrowing it down and then hitting that with high frequency. Uh, and then remembering to do some reader research to figure out what these are. This isn't just a newsroom exercise or a hmm, I think this is important to people exercise. You're going to talk to people. You're going to look at analytics. You're going to, if you have any research that, that tells you what people want, but really it's just having conversations, and not just with the mayor, although that's fine, but with regular people. So finding those and having those conversations. Again, inner circle, you'll, you'll start to see this. 
is, you know, we have in-person engagement, it's really important that we are talking to people in person and developing those relationships so that we can provide the things that are most interesting to our readers. So that's a little background. So why should we plan? I think it's so important for newsrooms, especially because life just can take over. We know how that feels. Some days you're, you're off, oh, shoot, there's a three-car accident over here. We've got to get a photo you know, photographer or somebody to shoot a picture. We've got, oh, geez, they just called with this event. And I mean, your day can literally fill up. And what have you done? By the end of the day, you just bounced around to people who were yelling, woo, over here, hey, look at me. And so planning allows us to make sure we really, really hit the topics that are important to people instead of just filling up a paper or filling up a website. Uh, so it really leads to better stories. And it's so important to find what's important for your readers. So you, it ensures that you tackle the stories that are most important. So we're going to get into some great examples now, and uh, these again, I, this is there are so many great examples. And even after I put this together, I was like, oh, I thought of I, I thought of some other ones that I thought were so good. But um, so forgive me because you, some of you are doing this very very well. And I start with Sarasota. I know that sometimes we we talk about them a lot, but their planning document was so good. And especially what I liked about it is it showed me the whole year. Now. For the, for the projects that were close to them, uh, you know, in terms of time, those were much more fleshed out, much more detailed plans. But they had an idea all the way through to the end of the year what they were going to be planning. So let's just take a look at their budget. And you'll see it's really small, but we're going to share this deck with you so you can kind of blow it up and, and really take a look at what they're doing. Um, but they're very much following a format that, you know, is one that we shared, uh, although they've personalized it and customized it a bit, which I'm totally about. That's great. And one of the things that, um, that you can't really see very well is and in what they do, especially if you look down, this is at the very beginning of the year, so it's you know, projects they've, they've already executed. They are doing this weekly, and you don't have to do it weekly. I've seen other uh, organizations that have a bigger picture budget and then a weekly budget for their, you know, maybe a Sunday enterprise kind of thing. So you don't have to do it that way, but they keep them all together so that they can see what their big, their big story is every single week and Actually, flesh that out. And do you mind yep. if I just, it just nose in real quickly? It, it's an interesting yeah. point. Yes, we will pass this deck along to everyone so you can then blow that up and see this. But you yeah. have access to anybody's C&D budget in the company. And by that I mean as an editor in your Google Drive, if you type in Sarasota, this budget's going to pop up, and you absolutely have access. We're a transparent company. This is not something where we're hiding things from folks. You can internally look at anyone else's budget. So as a major editor or an editor of even a small weekly, if you've got a nearby paper that you want to keep tabs on, you should absolutely be checking their budget from time to time. Two things, that's why it's important that you do a good job filling out your budget well, and two, you can also see what projects and things are coming on the horizon for other places. So that's why it's so imperative that we do this, but this is already accessible through your Google Drive right now. So anyway, Jean. It is if you're in the if you're designed in the Center for News and Design. Right, correct. Right? Yes. So Thank you. I'm sorry, if you're, I apologize. Yeah, if you're All in a state without that property. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but we can we can help you if you're not in the center to still to be able to call up this budget, for example, and just take a look at it in depth. Um, it's it is really you know it's really interesting to learn how other people are organizing things. So, uh, but anyway, so you know if it's far out, it might just have like let's say for December or something, it might just have a slug and maybe a story description. But then as the year progresses, you'll see more and more detail being added because they're looking at how can we incorporate digital tools. How can we incorporate social media as some sort of um, promotion for this? Um, you know, so there are a lot of conversations they're having early on, and then they're starting to fill it out more and more. These planning documents are meant to be living, breathing uh, you know, documents that you can change and adjust. You can say, ooh, you know what? We have this big thing that just popped up. We want to dig into it for this Sunday because it's super timely. What does that do? It just pushes your what you had thought was going to be Sunday to the next Sunday, and then you're ahead. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. Planning is a beautiful thing. So anyway, let me show you. Just, I mean, this was one of the um, the big articles or the big stories that they tackled as a result of some of their planning, and you can see that there are digital layers. Uh, this has to do with an associate of Steve Bannon's. Uh, they had a, a nice. Uh, 
you know, podcast that was 11 minutes long, who is Steve Bannon, just giving some really good background and rich background. And then also, uh, you know, a timeline that was, uh, it's easy to execute this kind of timeline. Uh, you could just, you, there's, a, there's a website, if you want more information, reach out to me or to Tim after the fact, and we can show you exactly like where that website is. And it's not something where you have to know code at all. You just have to know how to use a spreadsheet. So, uh, so anyway, uh, two really good things. But you can just see how they, they're planning this, and then they execute it. And if you don't have any plans, some of the, um, the budgets that I called up had nothing in the digital area at all. So one of the things that I saw from all the successful ones were they were planning digital as well as print. Uh, this was another big package that Sarasota did, and it was reflected in their planning document. It's part of the Bias on the Bench series, but it focuses on, instead of the bench, the judges, it focuses on prosecutors because there was a lot of finger pointing when they first started doing that series. So again, just fleshing all of that out in the plans. And they also, this focused on um, some some prosecutors and stuff in Jacksonville, Florida, where we also have a paper, so they worked a bit on this together. So uh, you can't do that if you're not planning and knowing, as Tim said, knowing what other papers are doing in your area, communicating that. Uh, and planning documents are one way to do that. Um, another great example is Daytona's budget. It also emphasizes digital in, in kind of a different way. It's also a spreadsheet, but as I'll show you in a bit, it focuses on maps data, video, and then also I, have, I, I love this column. It's called, what do we hope to accomplish? What's our goal with this? And it shouldn't just be like, we have to do this for inner circle or we have to do journalism with impact because Bill Church said it was important or something. This is about your readers. And so what do we hope to accomplish with this package if we're going to put a bunch of time and energy into doing journalism with impact? So you can see there's, it has pretty colors which I like. Uh, you can see like their story planning information, uh, data elements, and then they have video elements here in green. And then I'm going to keep on going because this is the rest of it horizontally, okay? Um, they have mapping. They've got audio. They've got, you know, you can see all the different ways that they're planning. And then some other, uh, other planning information. So um, they really get into some detail when they're planning. And um, I think that just shows in their execution. So um, one of their big uh, do journalism with impact stories uh, has to do with shifting sands, which is uh, about a dune restoration effort. It's cost a lot of money, but um, you know they're just kind of giving an update to say how is this going, is this working. So you can see that they did some video, they did an interactive map, so you can click on those and it gives you some status on on how projects are going there. Again, just part of the planning. Hillsdale, which we just talked about a couple of our larger papers. Um, Hillsdale is one of our smallest um, newspapers. It's a four-person newsroom, and they do a great job with planning. Uh, they are, so they're, they're filling in, you know, as you can see, they're, they're really focused, and they also, uh, it's hard to see here, but three columns from the left is digital tools, and they're looking at, at digital tools. They're already starting to think about that. And one of the, the packages that they did that was a do journalism with impact package, totally high interest, which is guns, okay? And they, they looked at it from different angles, so buying a gun, learning how to use a gun, um, you know, and the gun debate in general. And on each one of the stories, they had a poll. So again, this is some thought that goes into this. They're using PlayBuzz for those polls. So from what everybody says, this is a, this is a really nice interface, creating the polls, embedding the polls. It seems to hold up. We haven't had any, uh, any big problems with that. So, um, so anyway, uh, it's just a really good job in executing and planning again and including those digital elements when you plan. So good job to a four-person newsroom there. And then um, Kent, which is sort of a mid-size, a little small to mid-size you know, kind of thing. Their budget is also incredibly thorough. So we'll just take a little look at that. Um, again, you can't really see much, but I do like the fact that um, they're really telling you what this is about and um, you know, how, it's going to, how it's going to play out, all the different elements. And one of the, the stories that they executed as part of this, so you can find it both in their planning document and on their website and, of course, in print, is uh, just a great, a great story idea that we won't do for the next, uh, the next part. But uh, it is about vacancies for off-campus tents state housing. This was a big topic being talked about by readers, and, um, and they executed that after planning. So five quick tips. 
Number one, be sure that digital is a part of your plan from the beginning. Number two, plan different approaches to storytelling to hit topics in different ways. For example, you might have an alternative story form layer that you plan in, like a list or a Q&A. You might do an edited video story. You might hit your topic with audio, with a Q&A, with a key knowledgeable person in town. Or you might do a story map. In Quincy, they do a great job, this is in Massachusetts, with story maps. And then number three, plan SEO. This is something we might not be thinking about, but as you're planning, think about what your keywords are going to be. Think about your digital headline. Think about linking back and forth to different packages. Number four, plan events as part of your do journalism with impact. So events, instead of just you know, having an event that is unrelated to your topics, make sure that your do journalism with impact is reflected in those events. And number five, give yourself way more time than you need to execute those stories. So plan pretty far out. When you plan, you make space for better innovation, you create better story ideas, and you write better stories. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim for a few quick brainstorming tips, and then we're going to get into the next 15 minutes where we're going to yeah, do a just, bunch of story ideas. Just real quickly, one of the things that always, as Jean said before, kind, kind of falls to the side during the, this process is brainstorming. And I, I do this usually time, from time to time when I go out to different newsrooms, and one hour with an entire staff can net you so many ideas. So I suggest to you is get together quarterly or even monthly and, and sit down, put aside some time for brainstorming, some big picture brainstorming. So establish some rules up front to keep these ideas from going. What I do is I tell everyone in the room, give me your 60-second uh, elevator pitch for a big major project that we can work on. And then have everyone contribute. That's another key piece to this. You know, you, you want the sports guy to add something about uh, uh, education piece because they know some of the sources that might be involved. Or the, the folks who are uh, coming in with a, a suggestion about food deserts or something along that line, well, you know what, we have some senior reporters on staff who know that there used to be markets in some of these areas, and here's why these grocery stores, uh, you know, fell off. So be visual. Try some sticky notes. I use a whiteboard often, but sticky notes are a great way to do this. Set a time limit and make it move fast. As soon as these things get bogged down, you lose the room. Try to make these as quick as possible, and then ask all the right questions, and by that, if you have a story idea, and here's a perfect example. I, I just brought this up with folks at my old newspaper in a different chain, and I said, what would be your big topic? And they said, oh, the one um, chemical plant that we had that closed in the 70s and the cleanup of that. And my instant response was, isn't that a theme throughout our region? Weren't there 15 different chemical plants? Wouldn't a bigger, broader story that would affect the entire region be something about how our chemical past has essentially set us up for failure because a lot of the, the zoning and a lot of the, uh, the uh, plots of land around the, the area, and I'm from Buffalo, New York, uh, you know, are still toxic. And so neighborhoods and what that affects and the cancer rates, that's the bigger picture. That's what you as the editor need to ask. You need to take that story, which comes from a small beat, and turn that into a broad, regional, maybe even state or national story. Those are the questions I think you need to ask. And on, on that note, Gene, thank you very much. I'm going to turn this back over to you in a second. But what you're going to get today is a link to the video, a link to these slides so you can click through. And I should say you should sign up for next week's training session with Tyson Bird about Architect. If you haven't seen any of the projects that have come out of Architect, it's pretty amazing. It's a tool that you'll definitely want to be able to use. And I think on that note, we are done with the opening session. Yay, have a great day.